What is good, folks? Here I am looking at a page on our classroom. It's called Digital Coloring Book, and uh, it's an extension activity that you can try out anytime you're in between projects. So what we're looking at here is a, a collection of coloring pages, and I have carefully cultivated this collection. And um, they are all pages that you can search for on the internet, but Online, you may find a lot of examples that will be very small because they are just thumbnails because people are trying to sell them to you. Now, we're not going to buy any coloring pages. This one I actually scanned several years ago. So when you look at the pages, you can you know scroll through, uh, you can open to preview it, and then go back. And like I was saying, if you you know choose to work on one, it's worth keeping track of it and saving it, so make sure you do that. But here I am with the page open, and uh, I'm going to just click on the image and drag it physically over to my desktop. It's a great reason to have the desktop open to you and not always be in super duper full screen. So now we're gonna go over to Photoshop, and we're going to open our image that we just downloaded. So that page is on our desktop and there it is smile often we're gonna open it up and we're gonna observe what we can about the picture now one thing to check first is if you go to the image menu and you check on mode we always want it to say RGB color depending on the method by which I obtain the picture or you obtain a picture it might be set to something else which would make it impossible to work with and now we're going to colorize this page. It is detailed, there's a lot to do here. I'm going to select the paint bucket tool from the toolbar, and then go down and choose a color to start with. Let's choose a nice fiery red. So we're using the paint bucket, we're using the color picker, and I wanna offer you two different ways to add color to your picture. The first way is just using the bucket, because you can go anywhere in this picture and click and it should drop the color inside of the space where you clicked okay and that is working very nicely and if we're careful about it we can do this pretty well now don't forget you can also zoom in when you're working so you can see these details more easily and that works pretty well so we're colorized, we've colorized the full word often right there. Now, a second way to add color is to use a selection tool like the magic wand right here in order to select multiple places in the picture all at once and then say you want to just knock out all those colors that you're choosing maybe a rainbow of colors or shades of certain colors and you just want to do that. So let's do, uh, let's click on this section of this stripey thing. And then you know to select a second or more piece of something inside of here. You can't just click again because it just changes your selection. So what you do is you hold shift on your keyboard and then you can click and continue to select parts as you go. There we go. And we're selecting multiple sections where we uh, assume we want to do the same color. So let's zoom in, and again, this is just helping us mark the spots where we want to add the color. So let's choose a, a, a blue here, and let's get our bucket tool again, and then go in there, and blue bucket in the spaces that we have chosen. Now you may say to yourself, well, what does this do if we you know, didn't use the selection tool? I'm just saying it's a way to isolate areas and help you to be more fastidious when you color. Now if you notice, the color won't go anywhere else right now because of those selections. So when you're done with that tool, deselect like this, and then you can continue to add color in a way that you choose. Uh, the project is an extension activity to partake in in between projects or when you think you're finished with one thing and you'd like to explore another. I appreciate your attention and but that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.